All right, y'all. So I don't know that I can even pull this off. Like I can see already, this is part isn't even gonna work. So. Oh, um, but I did want to show you before I start tearing these apart. Um, after you guys were so gracious and commented on my post with the resin seashell or coastal artwork that I've done, it kind of motivated me to to do this or try it. Um, so I'm gonna give you one of my secrets. I actually go to Goodwill and I find picture frames um, that are rather cheap. So a lot of you guys already have them laying around. I kind of used mine already um, and didn't want to pay full price, obviously. So, especially when I was still learning or am still learning how to do this. But uh, anyway, so these are two that I found at Goodwill. So I'm going to take all of the matting and the picture and the photo out of it. Um, even going to take um, like the staples and try and get this little sawtooth guy out of there and any kind of points um, that's in there I'm actually going to pull all of that out so I'm going to do that um, I'm actually going to paint them also so um, just kind of wanted to give you a quick idea of what I was starting with um, I, again I'm not sure if I'm going to put this all together but uh, I will try to also figure out a better angle for this camera uh, to go forward uh, and to finish this whole tutorial and see if we can put this together. So, um, anyway, I will be back and hopefully be able to show you guys um, what I've learned or what I did to put mine together. Alright. Alright, wanted to jump back in here real quick. Alright, so... I took a screwdriver and got the sawtooth out. And basically, you see, after I took this paper off with an exacto knife, you still have all of these staples. So, I'm actually going to pull all of those out. Sometimes it's a little time consuming, but you don't want those showing in your artwork. I used to get really, I was really good at this when I was doing these back to back, so clearly I gotta get my technique done again. <laughs> uh, Alright. Only because the video is going. It's just gonna give me a fit, right? We wanna make sure you don't drop these. Trust me, I have stepped on one of these years ago. It's not fun. Be careful how much weight you put on there because you gotta remember your glass is still in there. Ooh, these are longer than I'm used to. Yeah. Alright, so you get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm not gonna make you guys wait till I go through all this, but again, that's basically what I'm doing. Um, so it can be a little bit time consuming, but all of this stuff will will come out. Actually, I do remember now how I did this. So, taking a screwdriver um, and pushing all of these staples up so they are, um, well, I don't know if you can see that, so they're kind of standing straight up. Then you take your needle nose pliers, feed them in there, and kind of roll it. Simple. So, again, kind of roll it. There you go. I knew that I had figured out a way to do that easier. It's just been a few months since I've done it. About a month since I've done one of these. There we go. Oh, we've got this guy here. Okay. This way. There we go. Alright, so as I said, taking all this stuff out. You want to be careful with your glass. You can get cut this easily. Take that, and I promise when we do the tutorial, I'll have a clean mat now. <laughs> All right, so set the set the glass aside for now, because you're gonna need to clean that really good with some like Windex or um, vinegar, or alcohol, what have you. So you want to try and get most of this 
paper backing type stuff off. Um, sometimes I've sanded it to get all the little pieces, and then honestly, once I've sanded it, if I can't get it all, I don't, I don't stress a whole lot about it. Still got to get these staples out, but um, I mean, you figure it's going to be the back. I'm not really going to see it, um, but I do, I do try to clean it up as much as I can. These staples should hopefully pop out of here with just a screwdriver. And there. And yeah, pretty easy. Some time consuming sometimes. And sometimes you'll actually have those metal. I forget, they're like picture or photo pins. Um, I think there's actually a better word for them, but they'll be stuck down through here. You're gonna wanna remove any of that stuff because your resin will actually, um, once you start drizzling it on there and getting it on there, it should actually adhere the glass to this frame. I wasn't sure that it's how that was gonna react. Um, and I left the pins in the first time and it, it was not pretty. Um, and it actually worked the way I hoped it would, or intended it to. Um, I've done four or five of these now, and I've yet to actually have the glass not stick to the frame for, via the resin. All right, guys, again, I'm hoping I can somehow put all these videos together, um, but wanted to kind of show you how a uh, quick and easy way to, to clean that up. So now I will probably rough sand this and paint it. So probably gonna use some chalk paint. Um, you can basically use any colors you want, but I think I'm just going to go with a, a quick and easy uh, white shot paint is what I'm thinking. Alright, I will be back. Hey guys, so um, after talking to a lot of you guys on um, in the group, the Facebook group, uh, yesterday when I was asking questions about resin uh, and kind of showed some of the work that I've done, uh, actually a lot of people were interested in finding out how I did mine. Um, I'm no way an expert. In fact, this is my first video, so I'm nervous as heck. Um, don't even know if I can do this. So, um, I've kind of got it rigged up uh, in my craft room. Please excuse behind me. You'll probably see my dog moving around, getting up, down, back there too. Um, but I'm gonna try and show you what I do. Um, I know that when I was trying to figure it out, um, people were not really helpful with me um, when I was asking questions. Not sure why that is. I don't know if it's just they're scared of the competition. They don't want to give their trade secrets away. You know, I look at it like um, I'm probably not going to get rich by doing any of this. I do it because it makes me happy and it's kind of what I love to do and it keeps me sane uh, right now. So um, if I can help, um, why not? So again, I've only used one type of resin um, and I'm going to kind of show you what I'm working with um, and then probably just try and point the camera down and show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it because um, I really don't have any other type of equipment to do it with. Okay, so give me one second here. Okay, so again guys please excuse me I am no way a photographer. Um, I don't even have my glasses on. Give me one second. So my table is full of stuff. Um, I kind of do these as I go. I kind of get an idea of what I want to do, but I notice that as I'm putting it all together, um, it just it just kind of happens. Um, so anyway, so um, I'm hoping I was able to splice the video together yesterday. You had saw where I had bought um, two frames from Goodwill. That's kind of one of my little secrets. I don't want to uh, go to uh, you know a place where I have to buy frames. Um, full price so found out going to Goodwill is great anywhere from two to four dollars I can get some awesome pictures I tear them down and use their frames and glass so um, I actually chalked paint this and just kind of distressed it a little bit so that's what we're going to be working with um, the glass um, now <laughs> I have just kind of rigged up a way that so sort of seems to work for me but you will notice that this is all kind of sitting on some vases that I've turned upside down um, eventually I want to kind of get a lazy Susan type thing where it can actually spin as I'm working uh, but for now um, I don't want to touch my glass too much but 
it, it allows me to, to move it around. And you definitely want a space where, because it's going to drip, um, which is kind of what you want it to do. So you do not want this to be against or sitting on your table. I um, always use something too. I use, I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy tablecloths for a dollar and I double it. And that's what I kind of cover my craft table with. Okay, so you'll need, well, let's just do it this way. So I have sand. Um, this is the, actually Dollar Tree again, uh, sand. I have found though that the sand seems to, I don't know, kind of clear out uh, or get very translucent almost when I put the resin on. But I thought about putting this in as kind of a brownish sand. But the more I looked at it, I'm really afraid that the dye in it is going to run once you put the resin on. So I don't think I'm going to use that. I think I'm just going to go with what I have for now. Uh, eventually, I will be looking to get maybe a little more denser, darker type color. But for now, it, this works. Um, I have various different things. I have purchased um, these sh pieces of shells, I guess. Um, this is a bigger set uh, or type these are smaller as you can see um, most of this stuff is either gotten I bought at uh, Michael's or Pat Catan's uh, or again our local Dollar Tree you know so if I can save money I'm gonna because you can get a small fortune wrapped up in this trust me um, <laughs> I probably have at this point uh, sea glass not real sea glass unfortunately um, and vase filler I guess like these glass type beads you see everywhere different colors depending on what you're doing um, I actually picked up some pearls in the bead section and took them apart and kind of placed them in there just kind of gives it a little added touch you basically the sky's the limit with this stuff I think today I'm going to try using um, this little fish you've seen some of my work where I use the mermaid um, and some signs. It's just kind of some fun stuff that I've figured out to kind of incorporate in mine. Of course, you can do simply seashells if you want. It is completely up to you, and like I said, the sky is the limit for the most part. Um, but because he's blue, um, it's kind of the assortment that I'm going with today. Okay, and my seashells, I kind of just have an assortment uh, here. I would actually like to get a better assortment, but for now, this is what I have to work with. I pulled out some of the ones that I will probably use, uh, anywhere from the big ones to the teeny weeny ones, if you can see that, which I think are just absolutely adorable. I have some starfish, and I don't know if I'll use this stuff or not. It's kind of like a seaweed kind of thing. I don't know. It was in one of the shells, uh, things that I bought. Um, so yeah. And the thing that makes this all work is the resin. This is actually the resin that I've used. I have only tried this product. Um, I did some research, found out it was very easy to use, unlike what I hear about the epoxy resin, which I've not tried. Um, it's a little bit more intense. It's got a very, um, it's got a smell and vapors to it to where you need to be like outside or in a real ventilated area. I want to be able to do this in my craft room. So, so far this has worked for me. But um, I will probably try some other products that I'm hearing now that I'm in some of these groups. So again, it's Envirotex Light. You can get it pretty much anywhere. Amazon, Michaels, Joann's, Pat Catan's. I actually went to Michaels. I had a 40% off coupon and bought this. Um, it can be pricey. Trust me. So if you can find a way to save, by all means, that uh, is usually what I try to do. Anytime times Michaels, you know how they send out those coupons. Uh, once or twice a month uh, that's what I'll I'll do with that uh, you will need something to store your resin because you will want to follow the directions very closely and the measurements if you do not this will not set up correctly um, I've been very lucky knock on wood that that does not happen to me um, but again I've followed the measurements and the the mis mixing instructions uh, pretty much to the T uh, please remember gloves. My first one you guys may have seen me comment was a complete fail. Um, there was a moment when I actually uh, was trying to pull off some painter's tape. I had seen a tutorial or step by step that told me you could use painter's tape to kind of uh, to form a dam around here that would kind of give it a, a rolled edge or a beveled edge. That did not work. Um, I had 
I was trying to pull the tape off before the resin completely set, but it was sticky enough that it literally stuck to my hand. Um, and I thought for sure I was going to have this artwork stuck to my hand forever. And that's kind of where I had the moment when I realized you did not wear gloves. <laughs> so it, it was all bad for a minute. Um, however, gloves is definitely important. I don't use the gloves until I get to the latex or to latex, to the resin portion. Um, that's just me. And then you will need, I use throwaways, you can use solo cups, uh, there's actually a certain type of uh, plastic cups that you can get, you can do some research, or you can actually, the resin will actually pull off these when it sets, so you can reuse them. Um, I haven't done that, I get mine at Dollar Tree, so I get a whole pack of stuff like this, I've even used the little shot glasses like this, depending on what I'm doing or the size of my project. Um, this seems to work for about an 8x10 uh, if you're doing across the bottom and like up the side. But anyway, I'm going to try these today. Um, so we'll see if those work because you will have to separate the resin. You'll have to stir the, the hardener and the resin itself in two different, two different cups and then pour into another cup both of those together. And I don't know that that makes sense yet, but I'll show you. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to turn this off and go... Oh, sorry. And a straw, a straw and a butane type candle. Some of them have hand torches. If you have a hand torch, I have not been able to purchase one of those yet. Um, but it needs to be the butane. Mine does not work that well. It does give me fits from time to time. But this is, it's a, it's a very cool way to get the bubbles out of your resin. Um, you'll have these teeny tiny bubbles that come to the top when you pour. Um, so we literally just blowing on them lightly with a straw can get them out. Uh, I prefer the butane lighter. Um, it works much better and quicker. Um, but when it decides to give me fits and not work, I kind of have to revert back to the straw. So, all right. So I'm going to try and set this camera up again and place it so you guys can kind of see uh, what I'm doing. Again, it's been about a month since I've done one of these. Please bear with me. Um, I'm hoping I can get to a point where I can learn how to fast forward this so you don't have to painstakingly watch every detail. Um, but for now, I'm just going to have to record from beginning to end and hope that I can tweak it before I, or edit it some way before I post it. Alright, I will be back. Alright guys, I'm really hoping you can see this. I'm sorry, let's try this. Alright, hopefully you can see close enough. I swear I'm blind. Alright, so you want to be very careful when you are uh, touching your glass. You really don't want to. You want to clean it with soap and water um, and then of course use some kind of alcohol um, to get I probably shouldn't even be using a paper towel, but um, you want to handle it um, with some kind of, you know, paper towel or rag or something to um, keep from getting fingerprints. Because once you get the resin on there, um, again, you could have forever fingerprints stuck there. There's no way to get them off. Um, so uh, I think we're good here. So then what I do, you want to, the resin is going to be what holds this glass into your frame. Um, first time I, like I said, left the pins in, um, I had said earlier, that looked terrible because you could see them through, see through the, to them. So I experimented and with my second one and hoped that once I saw how the resin worked and spread out the way it did, um, that it would kind of seep through into the cracks. Um, and it actually does. I've done five of these now and it's never not done that for me. Uh, so we're going to do that again. It's worked so far. It's what I'm going to keep trying. It's what I'm going to do today. So you place your glass on whatever it is that you're using. Again, you want to make sure that there is room. Um, you know, I have room to work with so that when it drips, it's going to drip onto your tablecloth or your mat, whatever it is you're using. You do not want to lay this down flat on your table or a crafting area and put the resin on because once that sucker dries, you will not be able to get it up. So, you're basically flipping it over, so like the back end, and you just 
carefully. Hopefully. Put your frame on like it would. There we go. Okay. So you just kind of can make sure. I tend to look down to make sure that everything I have it is directly. Basically, these glasses are making it set up against the frame. Okay. So again, it's why you want something underneath here to hold the glass up to the frame. Okay, so it seems to be, yeah, I'm taking my finger now. It seems to be on there okay, but you see why I use the glasses because I can easily turn it. Uh, again, one day I'll have like a lazy Susan and I can just spin it. Uh, but for now, this is my invention. <laughs> All right, make sure you have paper towels on hand too because once you start working with the resin, it can sometimes get a little messy. Um, I did not mention, I use a paintbrush. This is just a cheapy thing, but it's kind of stiff. Um, because as you're going to see, once I start doing my stuff, I will use this to move my shelves and sand and whatnot around versus my fingers. Because again, don't want the fingerprints. Okay, so I usually start with my sand and again this is just how I'm doing it I'm gonna do one of the basic ones probably with some shells along here um, and remember this is the front okay so everything you're gonna want to place like it's gonna be on your wall or in your window or whatever so it's almost too big but I'm gonna use them anyway and I probably look at that see you will to get extra stuff you don't want on there. So, um, I was telling you guys most of the time I will place my sand and shells where I want and then drizzle the, the um, resin. Um, I have found though with some certain with certain things like these extras, embellishments, you want to let the resin sometimes, depending on the look you want, put the resin down and then lay him on. Otherwise, you're only going to have you could pour him in resin over it and again it's completely up to what you want to do I think for this one I'm just I'm going to try and pour it with my shells and whatnot, and then try and add him um, hopefully that works for me today alright but I kind of want to get an idea of where I want him this I got a, a pack of tans so you wait for like the summer sales right now everything's 50-60% off so he was originally like eight dollars. I think I got him for like two today. Love that. Okay. So I don't know. He could be swimming. What's it, Dory from Nemo? Just keep swimming. No, sorry. All right. I'm nervous. I obviously. <laughs> All right. So I don't know. In here somewhere. And maybe I will pour resin over part of them. I can't decide yet. See, like the mermaid, she ended up being all the way underwater. I don't know. Let's kind of just leave him here and see what we decide. And you see, sometimes you'll get, like I said, you kind of want to do it in a, <laughs> a dust-free zone. I have cats, or I have a cat and a dog. So dust-free and hair-free is almost impossible. Um, but you really want to also think of that when you go, it starts to drying, because it's going to take 24, 48 hours. It actually takes longer than that, but it's actually to, like, touch it or move it around. It's going to take a good 48 hours. But anything that settles on there is going to stay in there. So, um, you know, pet hair, dander, things like that, you're going to want to try and, and maybe use a cover. You know, I've done that too. All right, anyway, I'm bad one. <laughs> okay, so I just want to make sure my guy... Now I'm good. Alright, so I just start pouring. And, and it does seem to get a little all over. But that again is why I have my little brush. So however you want your sand. Again, this is your artwork. Again, this sand though seems to become kind of pretty translucent, which I don't like. I might bring it up. So it's gonna go with that for now. So again, you see it's like on the side. So I take my brush and I just kind of brush it. You kind of want to try and get all these little pieces because again, those will get stuck in the resin. You don't really want it all the way up there. Maybe you do, but 
for this one I do not. It's stuck right there, my fish. Alright, so maybe it wasn't a good idea to keep me stuck down here. Alright. So again, just kind of touch it up. I hope you can see this. I'm looking at my phone and it seems like you guys can, so hopefully we're good. God, I hope I'm talking loud enough. Didn't even think of that part. Sometimes some of this will fall out once you get it done and you tip your, once it's all cured and hardened. Some of it will get stuck under there and, and come out, but for the majority, it's just the excess. I've never had like a chunk of sand come out of there because you're going to drizzle it pretty good and you're going to know that you have it enough resin in there usually. I've not had a problem with that, like I said. forever. Like I said, I'm going to have to figure out a way so that you can at least speed them, those videos up. I have no idea how to even do that. But I will definitely try and figure that out before I post this. So you guys don't have to sit here and watch every little detail. Alright. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect to see, right? You know, but you definitely do want to try and make sure you don't have any excess sand up through here. Make sure it's to your edge too. So you don't have like some empty spaces. <clears throat> and usually the way I've been doing the resin, it is a tedious slow process, but it works for me. Versus pouring it, because I'm scared if you pour it, then you're gonna have it's just gonna disperse things and but I don't have too many issues when I drizzle it. Alright, so it seems to be in the corners and up against the edges pretty well. And a lot of times, depending on the shelves, a lot of times you'll lose the fact that I even got sand in there on some of mine. But I always put it down just in case because you can still see it through the shelves. Okay, and if you want to put more, by all means, you can do that. Alright, that's good for sand placement for now. Alright. And then, it's basically just a matter of I'm still keep him over here. Starting to just place your shelves and glass pieces. Kind of, hopefully these don't just fall all over the place. Hold on, guys. Come on now. Okay, so can I get this closer to me? These little starfish guys are very, very delicate. In fact, several were broke when I got the little assortment. I think I got those at, I got these, uh, you see that, at Hobby Lobby. Um, some of the shells, I, I'm just, I, whenever I see them on sale, I grab them. Um, so, okay. So yeah, I guess just dig in. Now, I try to sometimes keep a sh kind of, because you can even glue. I'll use like the E, what's it, 6000 glue um, on some of mine, kind of make it overflow into onto the frame. That you will, the resin will not do anything for that. I would not recommend putting resin on there. Never tried it, maybe you can, but I have used E36E. E. I don't know where this is stuff from. E6000, this stuff, um, kind of just go around the edges. Once my artwork is completely dried after a couple days, I will put it around there and just kind of place them where I want. Um, so that's an option too. All right. 
So, but you do want to place it <clears throat> so that you can remember, because otherwise what happened to me one time is like I had some big old shell and then I couldn't do it. Again, you'll, you'll, you can't really hurt it. You'll be fixing stuff along the way. Like you see what I mean? You don't really know until you're gonna get in there and start doing it. I'm actually getting low on my shell assortment and it's driving me nuts. So you might see me turn around and grab out of my stash behind me. technique to this part honestly it's literally what you feel like doing or what strikes you strikes your fancy at the moment these guys here um these are like i think they're like mosaic tiles um i don't know they just were really cool and there was a bag of a bunch of different assorted colors um so i've kind of incorporated those two sometimes um i don't know if i will today but i do like the blue I think I'm going to put him back in here to get a better idea of space. He really is almost too big, but I don't care. I think he's cute. I'm going to use him. I didn't want to go really big for this tutorial as far as the pictures. So, we we'll use him up here. And he ended up might, he might just get covered, to be honest with you. I want to make it look like he's got little bubbles. And I wish I could find these guys smaller, and I probably can. I just haven't found it yet. Or really wasn't looking, to be honest with you. You could also use the pearls, I suppose, to make it look like bubbles. The pearls, I will tell you, they will run away from you <laughs> on your glass. I don't drop these in until my rest is placed. All right, and I'll show you that here after, after a bit. These guys are almost too big for bubbles. I'm thinking. Eh, I don't know. Alright, so. And you have all these. I mean, there's a ton of things you can do, I mean, honestly. You flip them over sometimes, you know? I seem to always go, like, along the bottom and up the side, though. But I like these guys as fillers. I just want to be, again, you're going to touch all this up with a brush. Just to kind of easily place them on your sand. I have some blue ones, but I thought it's, the blue's a little bit darker, navy-ish, kind of. Um, so I didn't know that it would work that well with the, more of the teal, so I didn't pull those out. Like I said, these are, you see the difference in these. You can see that. So, 
these are like thicker and bigger, whereas these are more, just they're more teeny, smaller. So I'll incorporate those two. Just kind of sometimes just literally as filler. I bounce around literally when it comes to this part. Alright. Yeah, it just don't seem like I feel I don't feel like I have enough assortment. Oh, let me get a starfish in here. You gotta remember with your starfish guys that if you leave them out like corner, which is fine, because there'll be enough resin on there to do that. But you gotta be really you gotta make sure like if you're packaging, which is another reason I haven't really done anything as far as shipping NDs that I got. Or putting them for order um, right now they're like local pickup only most of them um, because these can break so easily so some teeny weeny shells this batch of shells I actually got at Michael's and I really want to go back up to Michael's Michael's isn't real close I mean it's close but it's not like right around the corner where Pakistan's is they have a much better selection of um, coastal sea sea type stuff beachy stuff so maybe you can see how little they're literally teeny weeny guys but they're so cute so I'll put them in there too there. You see, this, this can be tedious, but it's calming for me. I I enjoy it. Like, I'm literally in love with this. And then today, I had a brilliant idea to do a completely different one, non-coastal. Let's just put it this way. It's more of a fairy theme. I know. I'm not quite sure I'm going to pull that off, but I'm so excited to see if I can get that to work. I try not to make them where they're all so close together. Yeah, it's just, it's literally your, see these two look too close to, it's literally what you want to do. But right now it seems like all my colors are kind of the same, that earthy tone right now. So you see there's just a little bit of straggler, but you're going to take your paintbrush and literally kind of tighten things up. I need more glass. I love the glass. I wish I could get my hands on real sea glass. There's some frosty kind of ones I found. I don't really remember where I got those. I think it might have been Hobby Lobby, but don't quote me. I think I'm going to use, just keep the clear and more of the rocky kind of glassy look uh, versus the bubbles or whatever you call these things. You know what I mean? It, it just, it changes literally all the time as you're making this stuff. At least for me. 
Sometimes I feel like a perfectionist. Maybe I am. Well, that's all right too, right? That's what your pearls will do to you if you don't wait for the resin. <clears throat> These little still guys like that run away from me too. is warming up to people, I'm telling you. There's a million things you can do. I think maybe a little more starfish. Sometimes you can go overboard, but then, I don't know, can you? I mean, it's your eye and what you want to do, so... Same with my little guys. kind of kept, I told you guys that <clears throat> some of them came broken. It's alright. You can kind of hide them in there sometimes. I like that. So you see how I just kind of use my, my brush to kind of just get things in place too. Oh, 
it done. Just for time reasons, I can't even imagine. What are we at? 27 just for this piece? Alright, oops. No biggie. Just brush it back in there. Again, just make sure you don't have any stragglers of sand or dust. The shells have dust too sometimes. And you can wash them. I've seen some people wash them. I honestly haven't. Again, you really can't mess it up. I mean, it's frustrating sometimes if you try something and you don't like it and you try and fix it, but you're really not going to hurt anything. Oh, that little shell guy has got some berries in there. I'm sure you can't see that. <laughs> I want to make sure at least you got two. I like to at least use two because you're not going to have the resin out here, but you'll have enough to cover him and it'll be enough to keep him where he's at. Right. Nah. All right. Like I said, you could keep going for days. to the resin piece for you guys. He's so cute, I want to see him. clean some of this up. <clears throat> Trying to make sure there's not too many spaces. Again, it's all preference though. You might like more spaces. I had somebody ask me about the coloring. And I, yes, I tried that, but it was on my first one, my the big fail. And I really just wanted to get my technique down first <clears throat> before I traveled back to the to the color, went back to the color piece of it because honestly you will think that it's the perfect color. It'll be, you know, you'll be mixing it or whatever and it'll look like the right color and then you go to put it put it down and it's so you can't hardly see it's there. Uh, another one I tried to use some, uh, have extra. So I tried something different in a glass with some shells and it was so dark you couldn't even see the shells. So um, I haven't went back to that yet, but eventually I will. Um, sometimes though, I don't know, so I've seen it done but it's usually very faint, um, and I just don't, I worry sometimes that it can maybe take on like a, a tacky look, um, but I don't know, you know, it's not something I'm not going to say I'll never go back to, because I would definitely like to try it again. I'm going to move him and just make sure I have all my sand out of the way. I still figured out how in the world I'm going to place it yet. Yeah, no, 
something like that. All right. Let me clean up some of this and get it out of my way. Because once you start working with the resin, honestly, you want to have as much room and that stuff getting in your way too much. You want to have as much room as you need. These guys I'm probably going to pull off because I will glue those later. But again, I wanted them for placement. Because if I put a shell there, I probably wouldn't be able to use those. Set those up here. So, I mean, you just can't use them all. It's kind of depends on what you want and how big your workspace is, you know. Okay. So, again, you see where you can easily maneuver this. <clears throat> I always want to just check and make sure that it is all against the where it needs to be. Okay. I'm going to take the bracelets off, sorry. I live in my drawer, if you can't tell. Okay. Gloves, remember? Gloves. <laughs> sticks. Actually, I'm going to try and mix. Well, I see this big blob of crap behind me now, but... I'm going to keep these guys out because I'll probably drop a few in there. So again, your resin is going to fall. You really want it to because that's what's going to seal your glass to your frame. It's going to drip. Uh, hopefully we don't have a whole lot, but you want to see a few good drips um, on this side and again on this side. So um, that's usually enough to, to keep it in place and not even move. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing now with this in the way? Uh. Okay. Let's hope this doesn't turn into a big disaster. That's why so far these have actually been my, one of the better inventions that I just came up with, but just because I didn't know what else to do. And again, that first one, I actually put it on my tabletop and then, well not fair, but on, on a thing like this. <laughs> Halfway through it I realized, oh no. Yeah, it was just a mess. I don't even know if it's still here. Here, hold on, I'll show you something. So this, y'all ask, this is my fail. This is my very first one. Do you see the amount of crap tins? <laughs> it was everywhere. Everywhere. I had, this is where my gloves got stuck to, or my hand got stuck to it. Like I said, I thought I was going to wear this forever. So, um, you can see fingerprints there. I was testing to see if it was getting hard. I wasn't patient. Uh, you got to remember that, because that, there's a forever fingerprint. You don't want that. So, yeah, and these are actually the ones I glued. I actually started gluing, and you see I didn't, I just didn't like the way it worked. I didn't feel like it, it flew, flowed well. This you can like, you see I can move things around with my paintbrush. Um, again, it's completely up to you. But resin, you do not need a lot of resin. This stuff does travel, and it does spread. So, um, I think I made half a solo cup. I didn't think that because I'm making two halves that ended up as a cup. Yeah, I'm not good with numbers and measurements. Um, and so I had a ton that I threw away. Um, and then of course used entirely too much. But of course I had that painter tape that was supposed to create my dam. Uh, doesn't work. Okay. All right, let's get going. So remember what I said, I always make sure there's no dust or anything. So whatever falls in there is going to pretty much, if you don't catch it, it will be a permanent feature in your artwork. <clears throat> so we're going to have one for each one of these. <clears throat> this one I'm probably going to use because I will show you later when it drips, which hopefully it does. They all have, but I'll scrape the, some of the dripping off just to help it along because you don't want big drips either. 
like you don't want those to stay like that. Okay, I'm telling you, this has been forever since it feels like since I've done this. So, please read your directions when you get this. Um, make sure you you read them over and follow them. Um, I've done it enough that I'm pretty. I have it down pretty much. Um, but you have. You have your resin, and then it has a, should be a hardener, yes, a hardener, okay, so you want to make sure you keep track um, of, of which one you're doing, you know, mix them up beforehand or what have you, so what I tend to do is, I will put this cup, the one that I will mix later, out of my way for now. My little beads, my pearls over here. All right, and I have not used these this size before. I'm almost wondering if I, I don't really need, I don't know that I need that much. Bear with me, guys. All right, I think we're gonna backtrack. So here's my little shot glass. This is what I started with. Um, normally I'll do a half of these, one of these. Um, which ends up once you mix it it's a whole one and that usually is good for an 8x10 um, I do believe this is probably a 12x12 12 12, something along those lines so I there's not a whole lot here so I think I'm gonna just do what I normally do I might mix it do a little bit over half and then use this to pour it in We'll try that today. Sorry. Probably should have been better. This should have been better planned out, but I told you all I've never done one of these. Okay, so yeah, you can't see that. And you gotta mix each one of these. Um, so you're gonna pour this, the resin, and they have to be one to one. So exactly what you pour in this exactly what you're going to pour uh, in your hardener okay of your hardener and then you're going to mix each one of these separately for two minutes so you'll mix this one for two minutes and you'll come and you'll mix this one for two minutes and then you're going to pour them together in here and you're going to mix this for two minutes okay all right trust me it has never failed me yet doing it that way all right So I do eye it, I don't get real technical, but you do want to make sure that they match up pretty even, or else it will not set up, from my understanding. And the good part about this is I have cut it short a few times, and I'd much rather go back and mix up another batch than waste it and throw it away. Honestly, it's too expensive, it's too pricey to just pitch it. And I'd actually want to get some like molds. You see like the resin jewelry molds. I actually want to do that so that I can, when I have extra like that, if I do, pour it right into a mold and you know, make some jewelry or the little necklaces or bracelets you see. I haven't done that yet. Though. All right. So if you see, you get to talking, you don't pay attention. So I try to line them up with what I'm doing. Okay. So this is my hardener. And try and eye them. They're pretty much the same. This hardener is a little bit thicker, so kind of take your time. Oh, my fan's blowing. That doesn't really help either. Oh, excuse my head, guys. <laughs> it looks like I have just a tad bit more hardener. Then I do resin. So I'm going to teeniest, tiniest bit. I 
Again, you probably should be wearing gloves right now. See, I get, but I'm not one that wears gloves for painting. So I tend to forget this part. Just kind of wipe off your excess. Always keep some paper towels handy. I want to keep this in a cool, dry place. Um, if you're a hardener, it is a little bit different in color, not too much, a little yellowish, but if this really starts turning yellow, they say that it's no good. Um, so it is just a little bit off color, um, but I've only had this for uh, two months. But again, you don't know how long it sat in a craft store either, so. That's great. I usually use the timer on my cell phone for two minutes. Hmm. I can't even see my time, can I? Alright, so 3.30. I guess I'll go off the timer off the video. Maybe? Alright. Gloves. See? I almost did it again. Where are we at? 43 minutes? Oh, good lord. I'm going to have to figure out a way to speed this up for y'all. And I think there's a thing about using latex, not using latex or something. Read up on that. My husband works with chemicals, so I have the ones that you can use with chemicals. Uh, he's got huge hands. Uh, mine aren't quite that big. Just kind of want to make sure nothing has fallen out of place on this. Okay. And you're kind of good as long as you haven't mixed it. It's not going to harden or do anything. And you actually have some time. There's been a few times where I've let it sit to kind of thicken because it really does run. You'll see. Alright. This is not, this is going to be a pain in the butt. Give me a second. I'm trying to get it to the top of the minute or second. <laughs> Almost. Alright. That was at 45. So we're going to do 47 on my little video timer. So you do want to make sure, obviously, you're not mixing too fast and it's spilling out. I'm going to make sure I don't touch to hit that. So when you're mixing it, you're going to see bubbles. That's fine. But take and make sure that you. Do scrape your edges. I'm hoping you can see that with my fat fingers anyway. So scrape your edges periodically and also scrape off both sides of your stirring stick. Okay? And then commence to stir. And make sure you're scraping the bottom of your cup or bowl too. You don't have to worry about the bubbles right now. They're going to be there regardless. Six, it's still have another minute. And periodically scrape your stirring utensil and scrape around the edges. Because you want to make sure that's getting mixed too. And it does tell you this in the direction. You do see there's bubbles, so like I say, you don't, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's fine. Okay, so my two minutes is up on that one. So I will scrape off my stick. I'm going to set that over there for a minute. Alright, um, this is my hardener, and I can tell because it's just a little bit yellower. yellower. 
right. What are we at? Same with this one. Making sure to scrape your edges periodically and the bottom. So scraping your stick both sides. Like I said I've been very lucky. I have not had any setup issues, or curing issues, or hardening issues. <clears throat> Hopefully today is not the day with a tutorial for the first time. That would be terrible. Whew. Yeah, I seem to like these little shot glasses. They, they're just the right size for me. But if you're going to be needing more, you can always go up to the next size or something different. So... This should be enough for my recognition. I don't think I need more. But like I said, I would much rather just pour another quick batch, you know, and even if it was half this, just to get through my project versus wasting it and throwing it away or, you know, now if you've got molds or whatever that you can pour into, then cool, groovy, you're, you're good. But I did not, and I do not like wasting product. Like I said, I have a small fortune in this right now, and I do believe you will too, because it is addictive. Addicting. One of those words. Alright, where are we at? I have about I have half a second. Alright, so it is tedious, but I'm telling you, it is well worth it, because if you do not do this correctly, it will not set up, and it will not cure, and all your work and all your product will be down the drain, because there's nothing you can do to fix it. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. Again, I am not an expert. I've only done this about, this will be my sixth time. Yeah, about six. And I'm hoping this helps y'all. I hope you have fun with it. Like I said, there is not too many people that were willing to help me when I was asking questions. And it's probably the first time all right, I have ever not found a tutorial or some kind of step-by-step. -step. Usually I can, I'm pretty good at digging and finding what I need on Google and Pinterest or YouTube. Not this time. Okay. Give me a second. I'm gonna love them hot flashes. And I probably shouldn't use the fan, but I can't help it today. Alright. So, now, this is so big. I don't I don't know what I want to use because I don't want to get to get stuck. Uh, Let's try this. I have all these goofy little containers that I found at the Dollar Tree. And like I said, it's a pack for a dollar, you know? I haven't tried these either, but we're going to use these for today. Alright. You can just pour one in at a time. This doesn't matter which one at this point. You want to make sure you carefully get every bit you can out. Again, for measurement purposes, you kind of got to do your best to, to get it even. Oops, and this is such a myth. Now I know better. You can tell I haven't done this for a minute. Nothing worse than having it all down the sides. So yes, I try to get every little bit out. <laughs> All right. And you do want to change your stick too when you are mixing them together from the stir sticks that you used on each one of them. Okay, now you add your hardener and you're going to stir it all over again for another Two minutes, three minutes on this one. Actually, I think it's less, but I do it for three. Because I think I misunderstood the directions the first time. But it worked the first time. 
Um, so, why well, mess with something that works for me? As long as you're not underdoing the time, you should be all right. Okay, I got about all I can out of that. Then you will notice the difference. You will see the difference. Hold on. Again, why you want to have paper towels nearby. I do not want this all over my gloves if I can keep it that way. Okay, so I do not believe you're going to see this. But do you see those dumping it? You see those streaks in there? That's the hardener um, mixing with the the resin. Okay, you, you want to get rid of those. You don't want to see those. So that's the whole point in stirring for three minutes. So do the same. Scrape the bottom several times. Scrape your sides. Oh, the square ones are different. All right. Scrape your uh, stir stick. And it'll get kind of a frosty look. And then it'll start to clear up. That's how you know you're, you're doing well with the mixing. And you'll start to see smaller and smaller stripes, for lack of a, lack of a better word. Um, you just want to keep going so you virtually don't see those. But three minutes usually is a good enough time. Six. So you see, there are lots of bubbles. Okay, but when I use the drizzle one, so when, uh, I will let it sit for a few minutes. It's called degassing, I think is what I called it, or Reddit was called one time. I tend not to have too many issues with bubbles. Um, I've been lucky. Watch my lighter won't work today and I'll be reduced to the straw, which is not to me as effective. It is fun though. It's a cute little or cool little. <laughs> Who would have ever thought using a butane torch would break those bubbles, but they do in like instant. It's pretty cool. And of course you want to make sure you never get it actually close enough to where it's and you will feel this actually, especially the more product you use, it'll actually start to get warm. That's normal. It's the chemicals mixing together. Five. And about a minute left. There are a ton of bubbles in there today. I'm half blind. It seems to look alright. Alright. I'm going to call it good. It's been three minutes according to my timer. I do believe. Hopefully I didn't lose track of that. It's quite possible. I'll get to talking. Alright. So. I will leave this stick because this is what I'm going to use to drizzle my resin. This is just what I, my technique. Of course, you can, people pour it on, people use spoons, plastic spoons, what have you. I'm not sure about metal, you'll need to research that. Uh, but the wood has worked fine for me. Alright, now, I'm just going to kind of let that sit because I don't know if you can. So there are a lot of bubbles in it. Spill it, that would be terrible. Um, but it's normal. So I'm gonna let it just sit for a little bit and degas if that's really the word for it. But I heard heard that in a tutorial somewhere. I'm gonna wipe off my gloves a little bit. Hi guys, 
Well, this is like already an hour long, and I don't even have the other pieces embedded or put together. Don't even know if I can do this, but I will really do my best to somehow make it where they do those fast forwards and you can see it done real quick. I, I don't know how to do that. I'll have to do some research. Otherwise, I guess I will post an hour and a half long video and you can fast forward it as you want. Right. My goal is just hoping to help somebody. I'm probably running off ahead like a crazy woman. Hopefully, I mean, you're getting the idea though and you're understanding um, at least what I've learned in my technique. If it helps some of you, that is my ex intention. I really do hope so. Alright, so I'm going to kind of move this back so you can see. Again, you want to make sure you don't move it too much. You don't want it to come off of the, uh, away from your frame. These guys out. I try to make sure I have, I've used two before. I've used three, it just kind of depends. But I do want to try and make sure that you have enough so that it's not like bowing in the corners and not, you know, not flush against your frame uh, for sticking for purposes, for securing purposes. All right, I've got my little pearls. Again, it's just something I like to add. All right, one last sweep to make sure my sand is where I want it. Not all over. No other dust or craziness. Pet bear got in there. Alright. I think we're gonna get to it. So again, some people you can leave your resin. I've heard you can leave your resin set. Um I've never had a problem with it being too too thick I couldn't use it. It got to one of my larger projects, it got to the point though where it was thickening up, but I was still able to to get it on there and trust me even though it looks like it's thickening it will once it's on there it will still spread it's crazy not as fast but you'll come back and all of a sudden it'll be out in the middle of your frame you're like oh okay well i guess we're going with that look all right okay i guess we'll just get started i still haven't figured out if i like this fish there but Part coming out, you guys, we've got to love. I'm trying to look at it in camera and see how it's cute or not that way. I don't think you should be down, do you? You shouldn't be straight, that's kind of boring. I don't know, let's just put them like that, kind of on an angle. All right. <clears throat> I still haven't decided if I want to do him. I'm probably not going to be able to cover him anyway because he's kind of beveled. Um, versus just laying him in there. I think I'm just going to leave him where he's at. And let's hope it works. It has for me in other times. That is awful foamy. I am honestly have never seen it that foamy before. I don't know if it's because this is it's been really warm in here. I turned my air on late last night to kind of alleviate the heat in here. Maybe that's affecting it. Hopefully it doesn't affect my drying. Anyway, all we can do is go for it. We will not know until tomorrow sometime if it's going to fully cure, probably. All right, so I drizzle. You can pour if you want. I've not done that. I feel like it would kind of cause your things to move around. Um, and you don't have control of it as much as where it goes uh, when you pour. So... This way I know I'm getting it in all the nooks and crannies and where I need it to be. You do kind of want to pay, be mindful. Um, you'll get drips if you're not careful. Probably will happen. I try to not get it on the frame though too much. Um, if it actually seeps up because it's, it's, you've got so much resin, that's different. The balloons are entirely too big. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, try not to necessarily have the drips on the frame if you can all right so I'll dip it in there Whoop, listen to me but there I go gotta stop talking and just pay attention 
Alright, I try to scrape the back of my stir stick so it's not going everywhere. And then I just start I'm telling you it's a tedious little process, but it has worked for me. And just start drizzling. <clears throat> You'll see how it starts to fan out and spread out. Even that drop like that spreads. It's crazy. Start. Make sure you get look at me talking about drips on the frame, and that's exactly what I did. <clears throat> I'm hoping you guys can see this. I can't watch that and do this. And make sure I get my placement right. And you might have drips where you don't want them, and honestly, it's just part of the art. I used to get mad. Sometimes I still do, but ultimately it's just part of part of the individual artwork, really. But again, if you can see, I'm trying to get in, even just the one drip will allow it to get into that crevice down there to be up against the frame. That's kind of what you want. There are a lot of bubbles in this resin, so. just drizzle make sure you kind of cover I like the look of my shelves being at least coated in it so a lot of times you'll see I'll just add a little bit and let it kind of disperse itself um, but I like that glassy look so it is all up to you I want to make sure that I have enough so I'll start to kind of move down and then come back and fill in my holes. I well, may not have enough. I don't know. It's been forever since I've done this. But you know, fill my little pearl. You gotta make sure you do that or he'll roll out when you go to to move it once it's dry if you don't have some resin in there. Kind of a cool little look. starfish covered so he adheres to the resin. So you see I'm kind of just drib dribbling or drizzling. Well I'm kind of moving on up for now and then like I said I'm gonna let that spread. You can't I don't think you can unfortunately tell from there but even what I've drizzled has already kind of ran together. Um, so a lot of times you think you may need to come back and fill it in and when you get done you're like oh okay cool it actually spread itself out so this way i know at least i have a base coat for at least getting everybody adhered a little bit and if i have to like i said i'll go back and i'll make some more but i've only had to do that i think once I do want to make sure my sand does get completely covered because otherwise it will fall out. Like I said, once you pick the frame up and it's cured, that sand that did not get in the resin will fall out. And of course, I would just imagine the same goes with the seashells. I have not had that problem. I'm gonna go. Well, hopefully you can. It's kind of hard to drizzle and look at the camera and then not worry about getting it on the frame, you know. <laughs> I do believe, though. Well, let's just keep going for now. I'm worried I might have to come back and do some fish. But you just never know until you get. And you really want to concentrate on making sure you get these edges. So again, the drizzling effect works for me because I can get down it. Oh. Okay, so remember what I said about sometimes I don't like the drips. Like, I don't like that drip. But, you know what? It is what it is. Maybe it's the bubble now. Who knows? The fish's bubble. So, but you do want to, what I'm saying, 
you do want to kind of make sure that you get your resin in there. So as tedious as it might seem, it, it works for me. And like I said, it's allowed me to make sure or to secure the glass to the frame without having to put any kind of fixture points or what whatever they call those, like metal points or staples in there, which is exactly what I wanted, so. So, this is actually seems to be pretty good. There's some holes in here I'm going to fill up. You can see holes along, down through here. But, you see, that's about what I got left. And I want to try at least get some of him in here. And I don't know if I should do all of him or not. If I do all of him, I'm going to have to make some more. Sometimes you never really know until you get to doing it where you're going to go, if you have seen uh, today. <laughs> and this guy, I want to have some more. He's not fully coated in this. But again, I don't necessarily want it on the frame, so I don't know that it would hurt anything. It's just my preference. I do like to try to make sure that my glass pieces are covered because I think they, that effect of them being water, I love that. So that's kind of the reason I like this whole look. outside edge so again you might think well how are you gonna get under that shell and you may not totally get under it but by getting let it do its let the resin work for you basically by getting it down in those crevices it will spread itself out I know, but well worth it. At least for me, it has been. I still see. And I haven't even touched my fish, so I may very well need to make some more. I see some areas where I haven't got quite got the sand yet. You probably cannot tell that, but or like even in this little area it does not seem to be against my frame yet so I want to make sure I get a few drops in there I've been known to, <laughs> let me see, this is even, well sometimes it takes a while for it to actually seep, um, I've never not had one do it yet, but hopefully, hopefully it's not an issue. You can always take some chalk paint, because it's going to be a glassy film, you can always take some chalk paint and touch that up. Been known. So I'm gonna try, and I don't have a lot of resin left. 
but I am going to try and make sure I get at least part of him down in the resin. gonna try and go over his whole body too much <clears throat> I don't know maybe if I thought it out I might have covered him completely like I did the mermaid one but <clears throat> I want him to kind of I don't know if I'm gonna like that or not but I'm just kind of making sure I've got the resin where it'll seep under him at least so it'll stick. So he'll stick. Told you. I'm not a professional. A lot of times I am just doing this by the seat of my pants as I'm doing it. And these drizzles will probably come together here if you just let them sit for a minute and do it, their thing. Even one drip like that will spray. I really hope you guys are able to see it. See it well. Just filling in the outline around his back fin. So I still I only have a little bit of resin left, but I was able to get all of my pieces, it looks like, covered. Eat that one dot. But there's some more dots. So you know, like I said earlier, it's just our shows that it's individual to you. And I usually just go back around and make sure that it has spread where I need it to. Seems like it has done just fine. So now the question is, what do I want to do? I think what I'm going to do is just continue filling in through here. Um, who knows, you may come back tomorrow and I may have decided to fill the whole picture in. I normally have don't do that, but I don't know. It's kind of weird how it almost is it going to look like the fish is half out of water. I don't know. <laughs> and this resin is starting to thicken. But it is still usable, trust me. Again, since I am going this side this far up, I want to try and make sure that I'm getting it close to the frame edge so another way where place for it to secure itself at <clears throat> well what I was saying earlier was I have been known when I was running low on on resin when it starts to drip taking my stick and running, taking the run off and putting it back into my <laughs> into my picture. Um, don't know if that's smart, but it's worked for me in a pinch or to keep me from having to mix a whole bunch more if I didn't need a lot more. 
So some holes right through here. So you, it is getting thicker, so it's not spreading as fast. But I'm just kind of making sure that the points on his fins are at least covered, so I know that he will have something to secure him. And you saw one of them where I literally just drizzled <clears throat> onto the glass on purpose. Just whatever tickles your fancy that day, really. Yeah, yeah. I have about one scoop left. I want to make sure. I guess I can make, try and make two. There's where I'm like, do you or don't you? Drop like it's a bubble. And hope that it does one drop. Ah, see, you never know how it's gonna work. It's getting really sick, but like I said, I hate wasting it, so. It certainly ain't gonna hurt nothing, making sure that it's all on there. You see how long it's taking for it to drip, <laughs> and to drip so. I'm probably going to hate myself for doing that, but. That I just like to make sure everything's covered, so kind of gives it that pretty watery, glossy look that I love. All right. So. I don't know if you can see, but there are quite a few bubbles in there. So we're going to just set this here. Very my little lighter works, because I don't like using the regular flame lighter. It just doesn't seem to be as effective. And then, let's see if I have any seeping. Not so far. So, and I will try and show this to you. I'm going to have to move my camera, though. Um, it is starting to drip and seep uh, under this side. So that's, for me, I like to see that. Because then I know that the glass is going to probably adhere pretty good to this frame. And I won't have to worry about it. Sometimes it takes a while to do that. Um, but my husband says, even though, because I still have it up against my edge of my frame, it's, even if it didn't seep, it should set. But there's something about having that extra safeguard um, to seeing those drips in the back. Again, it's just my preference for now. Probably because I'm new at it, but... Alright. So, let's see if I can... Bear with me, guys. I really want you to see this technique. So, if you can see... I have bubbles of sun I'm not trying to make y'all dizzy either. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see because I can't. I mean, I can see the screen, but I told you I'm half blind. I don't know if you can see my bubbles in here, but they're everywhere. So, again, the straw and a small... Get resin in my hair, and I'll never be good. Alright, so taking small breaths. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I don't have this hair falling in to my picture. That would be terrible. I don't know if you can see that, but they're breaking.
it is just not as effective as the butane lighter. I know. Oh, you know what I forgot? A few are my little doodad. So you heard me say that I try to drop these in there after the resin because they will run away from you if you don't. I don't know if you can see that now that I've got. Oh, well, not there because we're putting that shell there. Oh. Just here and there. If there's any resin there. There should be some back there, though. I really don't like those drips. I knew it would be that way when I did it, but it is what it is. Right, I, I have no shells back there. I just realized I have no small shells back there. I have a big one right there. Hopefully you saw that. <laughs> to be honest with you, I gotta get all these gloves. All right. So let's get to popping some of these bubbles if I can with this butane lighter before it gets too. All right. Again, I don't know if you can see. I can't hardly see when this thing's lit and when there's... See? It's going to give me a fit. Mm. I really need to get me a hand torch. You're not going to work at all. Not really. Maybe it's because I have no I'm really going to hate that because it's so much easier. Mm. All right. Let's hope this works. I just don't. I ain't get to get entirely too close and I don't. It just doesn't. The flame doesn't point where you need to. I'm going to turn my air off and move my fan, and they may end up having to blow all the bubbles out, which I've never been good at. So, you just got to be really careful with this, too, is that it almost, it's like you have to get it so darn close, and I don't like that, because God forbid I would start a fire. I imagine this stuff's pretty flammable, and it's just not working. It's not working like the butane lighter does at all. Alright. I went to the store and even had one on my list and still forgot. Yeah. You were seeing... I don't know if you can see that, but I blew too hard. You do really don't want it to have to see ripples when you blow on it. You know, I'm still gonna go for the torch. Maybe it says it's there is even it says there's liquid in it. That's what drives me nuts. It says there's fluid in it. I guess we're going to just be stuck, so. <sighs> yeah, it just doesn't. These lighters are just not as good. And I just get so close, I get freaked out. So if there's a big fire and you never see this video, I guess you'll never know it anyway. But there's entirely more bubbles than what I like. I'm used to getting all my bubbles out. And that's probably not going to happen today. Because even with the straw. It doesn't. See, they just don't look at that. I'm a bit a little frustrated, guys. Sorry. I should have known better and to make sure that I had what I needed.
See, it broke most of them, but it made my bubbles bigger, which I didn't want. Not as effective as a torch or a butane lighter. I heard a heat gun works too. I've not tried that. I do have a hair dryer, I guess I could try. But at this point, it's almost to the point where it's so thick that I don't. I'm almost thinking only the butane or torch lighters would work right now. But there are so many bubbles in this that it just annoys me. Ah. Yeah, right. It could be worse. I got some of them out. There's bug me now. Alright. I'm gonna try it. You know, I'm gonna try it one more time. That's I cut this piece of video out if I can. Oh, there it goes. A little bit. So I don't know if you can see how quickly it just busts my bubbles. That's why I love this thing. Honestly, if you guys can afford torches, get them. It will save you so much grief. I don't really know if you saw that, but it just took out probably hundreds more of my bubbles, even in that short amount of time. So, we're at an hour and a half. It's going to be a two hour video. Alright guys, with that, oh, I want to show you... Let it sit. Maybe it'll try it. Do it again. Uh, I do want to show you what it looks like if it's dripping and what I do for that. How in the world am I going to do that? Alright. For lack of making you guys all dizzy, I have my little selfie stick. Bear with me. I never thought I would buy a selfie stick, by the way. But I did for this project. <laughs> We're going to try and show. So, see, I don't, I, I bet you couldn't even see those bubbles. I was probably babbling on for nothing. Alright. So. Do you see how that's seeping right there? Okay. That's kind of what I look for. Again, I think that's just my safety net, though. Um, I'm getting a few of them down there, and that's fine. That's all I really need. I don't want it to be excessive, but I want to see a few of them because that's how I know that I, that glass is going to adhere to my frame. Okay. I know I probably just made y'all really dizzy. All right, guys. So, I showed you the drip. So, what I do, because I just don't want that big gob there. So I'll just sit here for a while and I'll just very easily just kind of take it off with my stick and then I'll just wipe it on a paper towel. Again, you should probably be wearing gloves with this because you do get it on yourself. I'm not a good tutorial person, not showing you how to do it right, but my hands sweat too much of those things and after applying, I just can't take it. Alright, so I'm going to go on this side and scrape my resin, extra resin off. And you'll do that if periodically you'll come back and check that, probably for a good half hour, maybe hour, depending on how much flow or seepage you got. And once you, you come back and you start to see that there's really not an, an, a drip, that it's still flush kind of from where you, you scraped it, you probably can call it at that point.
And you'll come back sometimes and there'll be all of a sudden there'll be another drip. And you're like, oh, where'd you come from? But again, for me, that's my safety net. And I'm okay with it for now. Until I know for sure that just having the resin against the frame is good enough. All right. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's entirely too long to post this way, but hopefully I can figure out a quick way to edit it for you guys. God, I look terrible. Um, <clears throat> and if I can, I will do that. If not, I'll probably just end up posting it the way it is, and you guys will have to just kind of fast forward on my running off of the head or what have you. So, uh, especially that part where I probably made y'all dizzy, but... So, I'm going to try and flip this around if I can. It's not going to let me. I don't... Hold on. Alright, guys. I'm back. Um, just kind of wanted to show you the finished product. It's actually been a few hours. Um, it turned out really well, I think, for a quick tutorial. Well, I guess almost two hours isn't quick. Uh, I do apologize. i kind of been looking over it all. I was able to put it together, the different... Uh, videos that I had accumulated and I think I'm gonna leave it like it is and let you guys fast forward pieces you don't want to look at because there's so much information um, I don't want to leave anything out or have you guys missed something um, so probably gonna try and post it to um, YouTube maybe start a channel um, so you guys can grab it from there because at two hours, it's not quite two, but it's almost there. I don't think Facebook would even allow that to be posted there, like, time frame wise. And it would probably take days. So, uh, I'm just, like I said, going to try and put it on YouTube. Um, again, I apologize for all the ums and all the uh, repeated words and what have you being my first one. Uh, I just kind of went with it. Uh, I do want to thank you for all of your kind comments. Uh, it actually motivated me to do this. Um, and I hope it helps somebody. I hope it actually inspires somebody else to try their own um, their own thing. You know, Like I said, lack of information kind of made me just jump in and try it on my own. And this is kind of what I've come up with so far. Um, there's a lot of other ways to do it, I'm sure. Um, but this is mine, so... I uh, hope you like it, and like I said, I hope you can actually start doing some yourself uh, or find your technique. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I'll probably take a few pics to just finish up the video. Uh, but again, thanks for watching and thanks for your support. You guys have a great day. Mm -hmm.